Hello everyone, welcome to Selenium Frameworks tutorial series. Now, one more thing that we can add to our last step is, just when we are into this, uh, basically when you are into this thing, uh, like uh, config properties file, like in last time we created this config property files. So just we will add few steps here. Now, if you go to this GitHub link, you'll find this uh, steps here. So the steps here is we will define the browser and the URL of the website, basically the URL that we are going to test. So this is the website URL that we are going to test and this browser detail. So these two things will pass here in config.property files and save it. So basically this config.property files is for storing these types of data like browser, URL, and many more data like will come around. So we'll, all the data that's related to configuration is basically uh, stored here. So that's what we do in config.properties. Now, the next thing that uh, we'll see is uh, in utilities package, we'll create a browser factory class. So let's create a browser factory class here. And then let's understand why we are creating this browser factory class. It's very important to understand that why we create browser factory class and what's the use of this class. So in this browser factory, now basically if you are working in Selenium frameworks, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is that the framework should be structured in such a way that it provides you all the steps available. That means normally when you test a web page, then in that case, you select any one of the driver and just test it through that. Now here, when you are doing the same thing, here you need to put all your options open because when we are using a website, it's but obvious that we'll use that thing on different browsers. So here we need to keep all the options available. So for that, we will write code here. Now, usually when you write steps while automating our uh, website, then the first few steps are like, first you pass the path of the driver, second you pass the, uh, you create the object of that particular driver, and then using that object, you call the get method where you pass the URL. So that's the first three steps that usually we do in normal Selenium class. Now the same thing we'll do here, just we'll write it inside a method, and then we will put things in that form, like just when we pass a browser, like right now I'm passing the Chrome browser, so the Chrome section works. When I pass next time the Firefox browser, the Firefox section works. So that's how we start thinking for building the Selenium framework. So it's better to understand how to think and how to proceed. So it's similar to way we practice, just we put things here in systematic form. Now, if you talk about this browser class, so already the code is written here, just I'll copy the code and paste it here and then explain the complete thing that which method we are using and why we are using them. That's also the reason behind. So here I'll create one method with name as start application. So this is the method name that is start application. Now, what we'll do here is first I'll import these web drivers from here as well as import all the options like import this Chrome options, import the Chrome driver. Now this Chrome option is a new thing that's added to basically the latest version of drivers. So uh, you need to add uh, this Chrome option before defining this uh, uh, this Chrome driver. Okay, now you see the steps are similar. Now here also I've done one thing, like I've added implicit weight. Now you know about implicit weight, it's better that you put it by default so that if something comes across, this impl implicit weight gets active. Now let's understand this thing, like how this method is and what we have done in this method. So I've created just a method with a method name as start application. And the return type of this application I have kept as web driver. Now, one question, why the return type as web driver? So it's because when you call this application, it will feed some value to this driver. So the value will be either the Chrome driver, it will be the Firefox, or maybe it will be the Internet Explorer. So out of this, any one value will pass here. So it's better to return that driver so that we can use that particular driver for our testing purpose. Now, in start application, basically, we pass three things. First, the driver. Uh, the driver object, basically the one that we are going to store value in. Second, we'll pass the browser name. And third, we'll pass the URL. Now, these browser names and URL are here, but we will not take straight away. Instead, we will create a class separate for that particular property file. And from there, we'll fetch the browser names and the URL as well. 
So anything stored in the files, we need to read that files and accept that. We will see that later. So right now here in the start application, we have created three sections. Basically, first in if first if condition, what we are doing, we are trying to check the browser and if it's Chrome, then it will give you this option. Basically, it will give you the drivers option where the Chrome driver is now. This is the folder option that we created before. Now, in second one, we are trying to give the browser name as Firefox. If I pass that, then it will give me that driver, which I'll add later. Again, same for the Internet Explorer. Now, if these all options are not supporting, then straight away it will give we don't support this browser. So that's the first thing. Set the path of driver. Second thing, initialize value to the driver. Third thing, using this driver called get method. That is in this get method, I pass the URL. So basically, all the details are passed while starting an application. Now, when you're learning Selenium, basically, when you're learning Selenium web drivers, you know that these are the first three steps that usually you come across. So that things are defined inside this browser factory class. Now, one more method I'll add here is that is quit browser. Basically, once everything is done, at the end, we need to close the driver. So that's added here. So in this browser factory class that's needed where we define the browser related details. And this is how I put my codes and I have just put in different uh, sections so that we can easily identify the browser that we are using. Now we'll see how we uh, how we'll create this class for this config.properties. And also we'll see how we'll read data from that config.properties class. <laughs>